Welcome back. I'm Muggsy, and today I'm going to explain atomic symbols in the periodic table. The periodic table of the elements is made of all these individual cells, and each cell represents one particular element. As you can see, I've kind of drawn the cell for lithium right here. Now, what does all this information mean? Some of it seems pretty obvious. For instance, the word lithium is just the name of the element. Li is also fairly obvious. That's what's called the atomic symbol. And the atomic symbol is just basically a short way of um, describing the element. Because every time we do calculations, we just want to write Li. We don't want to write out lithium. It'll save us a lot of time and energy. Uh, there's some important conventions about the atomic symbol. I'd say the most, most important thing is that the first letter of the atomic symbol is always capitalized. And there isn't always a second letter, but if there is a second letter, it's always lowercase. So lithium is very specifically capital L and then lowercase i. In this case, there's a lot of parity between the atomic symbol and the word lithium. And you can see the atomic symbol Li is just the first two letters of lithium. But for some elements, like gold, for example, the atomic symbol is AU. It's not GO. And that's because some of these atomic symbols represent really, really old elements. And so they would be described in, in earlier languages, such as Latin. A few of them are in German and that sort of thing. So they might not match up perfectly with the elements uh, that you might think. For example, lead is PB. Um, over time, you'll just kind of get to know them all. Maybe your teacher asks you to memorize them. Most don't. I don't ask my students to memorize the atomic symbols, but you should be able to look at a periodic table and find the various atomic symbols for the elements. Uh, the other really important piece of information here is up at the top, we have this whole number. That's what's known as the atomic number. The atomic number is really important. It basically is what determines one element from another. So hydrogen has atomic number one, helium has atomic number two, lithium has number three, and they go up from there. The atomic number is very specifically the number of protons in one atom of that element. So a single lithium atom has three protons in its nucleus. Now you may be thinking, um, that atoms have an equal number of protons and electrons. So you could say that this number is also the number of electrons in one atom of an element. And that's true if the element is in a neutral state. As you'll learn later on in your chemistry class, sometimes elements form ions, charged particles, by either giving up or gaining electrons. So it's much more reliable to just say that this is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. There's another number that you'll see here, and down at the bottom, it's this number with a bunch of decimal places. This is the atomic mass. Now, it's important to point out real quick that um, it's, in this case, the atomic number is at the top and the atomic mass is on the bottom. That's not necessarily the convention for every element on every periodic table. Some might have the atomic mass at the top and the atomic number at the bottom or one on the left and one on the right or something like that. The easiest way to tell the atomic number from the atomic mass is the atomic number is always a whole number, one, two, three, four, five. The atomic mass always has decimal places such as 6.9400. So if it has a bunch of decimal places, it's the atomic mass. Now, what is the atomic mass? The atomic mass is the number of protons in the nucleus plus the number of neutrons. Now what's weird about this is how could you have three protons in the nucleus and then 3.9400 neutrons in the nucleus? You can't have a fraction of a neutron. And that's exactly right. But you might have heard that some country has 2.5 children per family. Well, how can you have 0.5 of a child? You know, that doesn't make any sense. And that's because it's an average of all the families. Some have two, some have three, some have four, some have one, whatever, and it averages together to 2.5. That's the same with the atomic mass. It's the average of all the different isotopes of this particular element. 
Now, if you haven't learned what an isotope is, an isotope is just a version of this element. And so in order to be lithium, it has to have three protons, but maybe if, if instead of having three neutrons, it has four neutrons or five neutrons or two neutrons. And you can have different numbers of neutrons and still be the same element because really the chemical properties of an element are determined by its protons and electrons. The neutrons are kind of just around for the ride. They take up mass in the um, nucleus. Now they can make elements unstable. That'll come to play late, later on with nuclear chemistry. So what this number is really saying is that uh, there are some versions of lithium that have three protons in the nucleus and three neutrons for a total atomic mass of six. There are other ones that have three protons in the nucleus and four neutrons for an atomic mass of seven. Maybe there are some that have three protons in the nucleus and five neutrons for a total atomic mass of eight. And if you took the relative proportion of all these different isotopes and averaged them together, you would get this number. So which one of these is most common? Well, seven, the one with four neutrons, because this number, 6.94, is really close to seven. So you could say a typical lithium atom has four neutrons in the nucleus. Oops. <laughs> Um, and how I got that is I basically rounded this to the nearest whole number, which is seven. I subtracted the number of protons and that gives me the number of neutrons. Okay, that was a lot to say. Let's actually visualize this element now. So if we're thinking of a lithium atom, based on the information I see here, how many protons are in the nucleus? Well, the atomic number is three, and the atomic number is always, always, always the number of protons. So that means there's three protons in the nucleus. And I'll draw them as little plus signs because protons all have a positive charge. How many neutrons are there in the nucleus? Well, the nearest whole number for the atomic mass is seven. And the atomic mass is the number of protons plus neutrons put together. So if we have an atomic mass of seven and we have three protons, that leaves four neutrons. So let's add a little four neutrons to our nucleus there. Put one in the middle and there's our nucleus. So the nucleus of a lithium atom is on average four neutrons and three protons. It could also be more or le fewer or more neutrons, but the number of protons will always be the same. Okay, now what's the number of electrons? Well, if this is a stable atom and not an ion, the number of electrons are always equal to the number of protons. So our atomic number is three, we have three protons, therefore we have three electrons. So let me just put three electrons around this nucleus and I have three electrons orbiting the nucleus. Now in the future we'll probably learn that this electrons don't just orbit the nucleus in one big orbit. They uh, orbit the nucleus in distinct energy levels that's described by the Bohr model and so really it would be more like there are two electrons orbiting the nucleus in the first energy level and then another electron orbiting the nucleus a little further out for a total of three electrons. But that's a little bit advanced for what we're doing right now. Okay, that was a lot of information. Let's do this again with a different element this time. All right, here you can see we have another atomic symbol for a different element. In this case, that element is sulfur. So let's ask ourselves how many protons, neutrons, and electrons does a single atom of sulfur contain? I'll use a plus for protons, a negative for electrons, and I like a capital N for neutrons. I don't use either positive or negative for neutrons because they're neutral. They're neither positive nor negative. Okay, protons are the easy one. We just look at the atomic number. The atomic number is always, always, always the number of protons. And in this case, a single atom of sulfur has 16 protons. Now, assuming that this isn't an ion, that this is a stable element, then it's also going to have always the same number of electrons, in this case, 16. 
Finally, to get the number of neutrons, we take the atomic mass, that's the one with a bunch of decimal places, and we round it to the nearest whole number. In that case, that number is 32. Then we subtract the number of protons because atomic mass is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So if there's 32 protons and neutrons and there's 16 protons, and we subtract those away. That's not a plus, that's a little plus sign for a proton. Then we're left with 16 neutrons. So 16. So the answer to this problem is 16, 16, and 16. In some cases, the number of protons will be the same as the, I'm sorry, the number of neutrons will be the same as the protons and electrons, but that's not always the case as you saw with our last example, lithium. Um, one other notable thing about this element, sulfur, is you'll notice it o it's only a single letter. It's not two letters, SU, it's just capital S. The more common elements t uh, tend to just get a single letter, and then the elements that come after them, such as silicon, will have to use two letters, SI. But sulfur, because it's really common and was really well known in antiquity, just gets a capital S. Okay, and that's how this works for any element that you want. The only other thing to consider, as I said earlier, is that some elements, because they came from other languages, Latin, Greek, German, um, they, the atomic symbol and the atomic uh, and just the name of the atom don't necessarily match. And if you want to practice reading atomic symbols or any other chemistry skill for that matter, head on over to learnsomething.app, my app, select the chemistry course, and we'll give you lots of opportunity to practice this skill, such as how many neutrons are in a sodium atom? If you said 12, that's correct. Uh, as with all of our problems, they'll get progressively more difficult. We'll give you lots of opportunities for practice. And then when you filled that bar all the way up, you'll know you'll really have mastered this skill. So um, yeah, go ahead, head over to learnsomething.app. Once again, thanks again for watching.